This video is sponsored by DisabilityQuotes.com. They have been helping residents and also practicing physicians find the right type of disability insurance for the past 20 years. This is a type of insurance that ensures that your income continues in the event that you cannot continue practicing medicine. It's important. So important that I personally have disability insurance. Click on the link below in the description for a free quote from them today. What's up everyone? This is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. Today I have a very special guest. She's going to tell us all about the field of endocrinology, why she went into it, and also some tips for you guys. Uh, Dr. Wood, thank you for joining me this evening. How are you doing? Hi, how are you? Thanks for having me on your show. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself to the uh, viewers and tell us who you are and uh, what you do. Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Wood. I'm an endocrinologist. I work in private practice here in Atlanta. I'm so happy to be here to speak with you. Awesome. And um, what did you do your training at? So I am from Barbados. So I did my medical school um, in Barbados, a little bit different. So in the Caribbean, we enter medical school at 18. Really? And yeah. So oh. that was interesting. <laughs> and it's the five-year program so by 23 i was a full-fledged graduated physician um so i did two years there in internal medicine and then i came to the states because i wanted to become an endocrinologist yep. and there wasn't any opportunity to specialize in barbados where i'm from mm. um so i did my residency um in philadelphia and then my fellowship in endocrinology at university of wisconsin in madison wisconsin okay and coming from Barbados to the U.S., I have a lot of students who, like foreign medical graduates, who are interested in doing that. Was there something that you found that, that helped you kind of get to that point? Or what, what was, how did you end up um, kind of matching into a residency program and then fellowship? So I think um, in terms of coming from another country, I think it's a lot more competitive now than yeah. when I came because I came in 2006. Oh, okay. so one thing that I recommend to all my mentees right now is to try to do some kind of clinical rotation mm. here in the U.S. Make sure you get a good LOR from someone who's here in the States, obviously having good good board scores. Yep. Um, but I, I say key is to get some experience here. Okay. And you're an endocrinologist. Uh, for the people who don't know what that is, uh, can you break it down? Like, what is an endocrinologist? So no one knows what an endocrinologist is. <laughs> So I say I'm a, I'm a doctor who treats diabetes and other hormonal conditions such as thyroid disease. Gotcha. I also see weird and wonderful things like pituitary problems, adrenal problems, even osteoporosis. That all falls under diabetes, I mean under endocrinology. Mm -hmm. But the vast majority of my practice is diabetes, maybe like I would say a half maybe wow. is diabetes. The rest is thyroid disease and, the, and the other, other, other disorders. Okay. What was it about endocrinology that got you interested in it? Because I, I know the path is you have to do internal medicine first. Yes. So I did in three years of internal medicine residency. Uh -huh. And then my fellowship was two years. Mm -hmm. some, some other universities prefer doctors who are more research oriented. They did three years, but mine was a two year fellowship. Okay. And what was it about endocrinology that got you interested? <laughs> That's a pretty interesting question. So when I was about 16, I belonged to this club called Key Club. I'm not sure if you've heard about it before. It's like the junior arm of the Kiwanis Club. And that year, the worldwide uh, project was to eradicate childhood hypothyroidism. Mm. And I was chosen to be the student who had to go around to all of the other key clubs and even to the Kiwanis Club and Kiwanis Clubs and talk about it. Mm. So I had to learn about the thyroid and hypothyroidism and the symptoms and how to treat it, etc. And then um, fast forward when it was in medical school, I think the seed was planted when I was 16, not even thinking about really being a doctor. Mm -hmm. And then when I was in medical school, like, I just had a passion for all things endocrine. Mm -hmm. um, it was one topic that I could read and not fall asleep. Like wow. I would fall asleep with everything else. Yeah. With endocrine, I couldn't get enough of it. Wow. Knew that this is what I was supposed to, to, to get into. And it just, it just shows that you never, you know, you never discount those small things that happen in our lives because it kind of all take, 
it kind of takes you on the path of where you're supposed to be. Gotcha. What you're supposed to do. Uh, to become an endocrinologist, you have to do four years of medical school and uh, three to four years of residency, internal medicine. Yes, and yes then internal medicine. And for two years. So two to three years, depending on if you want to do more research or not, yeah. Okay. And currently you're in private practice. Uh, do most people go to academic versus private practice or it kind of just depends? Just depends. I think, you know, for endocrinology, the lifestyle is, is kind of good. Yeah. Um, so you find a lot of women who have children going into endoc endocrinology. Um, most of my colleagues went into private practice. Mm -hmm. um, it just all depends on what your interest is. Okay. Now you talk about the lifestyle. Uh, <laughs> what is a typical day for you? It kind of starts at what time and then ends at what time? How, how do your days usually look? So I'm full time. So I work, you know, 40 hours. So, you know, 830 to 430. Um, nowadays, some practices are moving away from, from inpatient services, but at other jobs that I've had, I've also had to round in the hospital. Um, you know, there's always need for diabetes management in the hospital okay. with, with you surgeons, you know, yeah. so <laughs> you guys always manage diabetes. We always call the specialists. You guys always call us for help. Yeah. Um, but right now in my current um, setup, I'm just outpatient endocrinology, Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 4.30. Okay. And do you see any patients as a primary care physician or solely endocrinology? Solely endocrinology. I think, you know, the older generation of doctors would just do everything. Yeah. But nowadays, most of us are just sticking to endocrinology. I mean, obviously, if a patient comes in front of me um, with complaints, I'm not going to ignore them. But for the most part, you know, I do endocrinology. Okay. So a patient who uh, has a new diagnosis of diabetes, they're seen it maybe in the ER or the turn of medicine physician, and then they refer to you, and you kind of manage them from that point on. Yes, so I got new new diabetes, um, new patients with diabetes, especially type 1 diabetics. Obviously, you know, primary care doctors also manage diabetes. Okay. You know, they're the front line of, of, of diabetes management, but they would refer someone to me who's hemoglobin A1C is out of control. Mm -hmm. No matter what they do, they, they can't bring the, bring the um, hemoglobin A1C down. Mm -hmm. So I get a lot of the, the bad, you know, complicated cases okay. coming into my office, yeah. Gotcha. Um, so once you're done with all your training, your medical school, your residency, and your fellowship, and I know it depends on kind of where you, you end up, academic versus private practice, mm -hmm. how much can an endocrinologist make uh, roughly uh, once so, they're done? So as you know, a lot of this is all, so many factors play into this. Yeah. Yeah. One of the biggest, one of the biggest thing is where you, where you end up, like, mm -hmm. you know, Northeast versus Midwest. Um, the salaries do vary. Um, but I think a good starting salary is at maybe 200000 Okay. More experience, you can get up to 240, 250, 260. As I said, it depends on uh, where you're located in the country. Okay. Uh, so if a student wants to become an endocrinologist or wants to be become a physician in general, what kind of advice would you uh, have for them? So I would, so I said endocrinology is a really, you know, rewarding field. Um, you can actually track a patient's success. You know, someone who comes in with an A1C of 10, yeah. you know, after working with you for, you know, three to six months, you can see it come down. Yeah. So it's very rewarding. So if you're interested in my field, I would say go for it. Yeah. One, one thing I would suggest would to have good mentorship. You know, I've made mistakes along the way. I'm sure, I'm sure you have as well. Absolutely. And you know, we don't have to keep reinventing the wheel. You know, find someone who's been where you are, who's where you want to, who's where you want to get to and, and learn from them. You know, mentors can connect you to their network. And as they say, your network is your net worth. Mm -hmm. So I would really say, try to find good mentorship. I know when I was in residency, I um, did a rotation at another hospital. Mm -hmm. And one of my mentors there was a world renowned thyroidologist. Mm -hmm. And she and I connected really well. I did well on my rotation. I, w I impressed her. And I had a glowing LOR that opened up so many doors for me because wow. of my interviews. So I think, you know, finding someone that can really um, help push you is super important. Gotcha. And what about any advice for the foreign medical graduates who want to come to a U.S. residency or just practice in the U.S.? What, what kind of advice would you give them? Like I said before, um, if you can, make sure that you can do an away elective here, mm -hmm. get a good LOR here. You know, luckily for me, I spent only two years in Barbados before coming here. Mm -hmm. So starting over wasn't really a big deal for me because I only had invested two years there. Yeah. But there's some um, IMGs who have been attending mm -hmm. overseas mm -hmm. and then had to come here and start all over. And it could be a, could be a challenge. Um, but if, you, this is where you, if this is where you really want to be, I, you know, I think it's worth it. Gotcha. 
And you said 18 that you started medical school? Yes. I didn't even know what medical school was. <laughs> <laughs> that's I had to grow up pretty quickly. <laughs> wow. And that's pretty common in Barbados? Yeah, in the Caribbean, it's the five, well, when I was doing it, it was a five-year program. So we wow. started at 18, and by 23, I was an intern. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Did you receive any flack for that, or did people give you a hard time when you came to the U.S. being so young? So I had put two more years in. So when I came to the States, I was, I think it was 25 when I became a resident. So I was kind of, you know, the same age as my other, as my other peers. Okay. You know? And you see a wide variety of, of people in medical school. I remember in my residency, there was this guy who was probably in his mid forties, who was a lawyer before and yeah. then came into medicine. So people follow their passions at any age. Yeah. And I think the oldest in my class was 44. So he was a musician yeah. before. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Dr. Wood, thank you so much for uh, thank coming you for on having me. and uh, sharing your, um, you know, your success, and we congrats on all that. Um, I always ask my, my guests three last uh, questions. You can give one or two-word answer. Uh, <laughs> what is your favorite food? Oh, my favorite food. That would have to be from Barbados. <laughs> what, what's a dish? I, I want to actually, that's on my bucket list to go one day. So if I go there, what, what's a dish that I have to try? So our national fish is called flying fish. So, you know, I'm from an island, so we're surrounded by water and you can get fresh. You can go to the, the fish market, see yeah. them bring it out of the ocean onto the slab and cut it up for you. Huh. So uh, seafood is really good in Barbados. So my favorite fish is called flying fish. It actually flies out of the water, but it's yeah. called flying fish. Um, so you must have that when you go to Barbados. Gotcha. Um, I will definitely uh, remember that and write that down. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite thing to do outside of medicine? So uh, over the past year, I've been developing um, other gifts and talents that I have, and I've realized that I love to write. Right. So I, for the past year, I've been writing a blog. Yep. I share about the struggles that I have. I think, you know, as women and, you know, doctors in general, we all go through similar things, but we are ashamed or afraid to share it. Yep. So I want to break the stigma about certain things like anxiety, or fear, we all have fear of failure. Mm -hmm. um, we all feel we are, even though we're successful, we yeah. all feel that we aren't good enough. Like, what is that? Yeah. You know, so I write about topics like that, even about dating in Atlanta. Like, everything is in my blog. Okay. <laughs> and it has become quite a passion of mine. Okay, that's awesome. It's always good to have something outside of medicine that definitely uh, passion of yours. So, um, and do you have a, what's a particular interest in endocrinology? I know you maybe mentioned diabetes. Uh, do you mm -hmm. have a, something that for me is spine surgery. So I love spine surgery and orthopedics, but do you have a particular interest in endocrinology? Well, because of my mentor, my mentor in fellowship who saw lots of metabolic bone disease. Mm -hmm. Um, I love metabolic bone disease, so like osteoporosis, uh -huh. hypercalcemia, yeah. hyperparathyroidism. So those cases excite me. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Dr. Woods, thank you so much for uh, joining me today and uh, sharing your story, a real inspiration to all of us. I, thank I appreciate you. It. Um, you mentioned your website. So, um, if, how can people get a hold of you or contact you? So my website is drkellywoodmd.com, mm -hmm. and you can find me on all of the social media handles by drkellywoodmd. Dr. Wood, thank you so much uh, for joining me tonight. Uh, I really you. appreciate it. Okay, you take care. Uh, yep. And for everyone else, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss them. We'll see you next time.